John 10, 27, 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Revelation 2 and 3 have seven declarations of whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. As John was being inspired to write to each of the messengers of the seven churches, he was told to include the statement. In essence, God was about to speak, and it was the responsibility of those who could audibly perceive what was being said to hear. As we think about that, from the undertone of John 10.27, God is clearly in constant communication with his sheep. They know his voice, but they must also be active and deliberate to discern it. Throughout the Bible, we have seen where God has used various methods of communication to speak with his children. In the Old Covenant, we see him appearing in the burning bush and speaking to Moses. It doesn't say how he appeared to Abraham, but we are told that Abraham was 99 years old when the Lord appeared to him again and said, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless and I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Genesis 17, 1 and 2. In 2 Kings 19, God appeared and spoke to Elijah in a whisper. There are other episodes in the Bible where God revealed himself in theophany forms and communicated to his people. None can be compared to the Ark of the Covenant. God said, And there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you. From above, the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, which are on the Ark of the Testimony, about everything which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel. Exodus 25:22. Regardless of the form that God chose to reveal himself in and speak through, the treasured truth is that God was speaking and the people were paying attention. As it relates to dreams, we are sure that God has spoken to individuals through them. The book of Daniel has many instances where this can be examined. In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His spirit was troubled and his sleep left him. Daniel 2.1, this king had conquered Judah and reigned over them while they were in exile. He was by no account, at least in the early parts of his mentions in the Bible, a true worshiper of Yahweh. Yet we see him having a dream in the verse in question. His first reaction was to seek the assistance of the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans. This is something we should definitely not do to a certain interpretations when we dream. The Bible speaks against such in the book of Leviticus. It says, do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out, and so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God, Leviticus 19.31. This scripture still holds true as is evident in Galatians 5.20's treatment of the workers of sorcery as working in the flesh. Idolatry sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions. The starting point of how to hear God speak to us through our dreams 
is to seek clarity from God. The king should have first asked God for him to reveal the meaning of his dream and sought clarity from Daniel, who is a servant of God, rather than from the men he turned to. So if we think God has spoken to us in a dream, we can find a God-fearing saint who is mature and able to give discerned spiritual matters. As Daniel stated in chapter 2, 27, 28, no wise men, enchanters, magicians, or astrologers can show the king the mystery that the king has asked. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Daniel went on to interpret the king's dream. The next individual whose story can inform us is Jacob. Genesis 28, 10, 22 recounts the scenario of Jacob resting at Bethel and receiving a dream from God. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. When he woke from his sleep, he exclaimed, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. In verse 16, to hear from God in our dreams, we must be aware of his presence. We miss so much what God is doing in our lives because although we have ears, are we hearing what he is saying to us? Like Jacob, we are unaware. Being unaware of what we are doing can cause us to lose out on a myriad of blessings. Hebrews 13, 2, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. In order to hear from God in any circumstance, we must be aware of his presence and the fact that he is speaking. Let me caution the individual who gets obsessed with dreams of a spiritual nature by turning to Charles Spurgeon. He said, I never will believe a man to be a Christian merely because he has dreamed himself one. For a dreamy religion will make a man a dreamer all his life, and such dreamers will have an awful waking at last. If that is all they have to trust in, Spurgeon did believe that God, if he wants, will speak to a man through dreams. But he rightly discerns that we should not put too much trust into dreams. Can we say that God does not speak to us through dreams? No. Even Spurgeon, though skeptical, stated, many persons dream very wonderful dreams, and certainly God doth warn us in dreams and visions even now. But should we see every dream as God speaking? The Bible does not support that notion. The sheep of God must be able to discern the voice of God, whether in dreams, visions, nature, or otherwise. The more we communicate, we will be better able to hear him with clarity. In the instance, we are unsure if his voice is present in our dreams. We should seek the counsel of prayer from God and of the wise men of God who are spirit-filled and led. Let me help us in decoding the voice of God when necessary. The voice of God will never speak anything that is contrary to what the Word of God says. If you experience something that goes against what the Bible tells us to do, that should be an immediate red flag and you must come to the conclusion that the message cannot be from God. The more we pray and seek God, the more capable we will be in knowing the voice of God. The devil always knows what is in the Bible, as we saw when he tried to tempt Jesus in the wilderness. He quoted the words of the Bible back to Jesus, and he may use scriptures to try and confuse us. 1 John 4, 1 through 3. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, 
but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Therefore, we must always remain vigilant and have the ability of discernment. I am asking, if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless.